you, uh, Michael. I think you know so many of us say when we look at you know politics and the media, you know where have all the good people gone? Um, Michael, we look at you and we see you as a man of who's of courage, of integrity, who made a great sacrifice and who will be vindicated by history. To say the final word, I'd like to, and to formally thank Michael, though, I'd like to introduce uh, someone who I think most of you all know for the great works he's done, Sharks. <laughs> Look, um, I'll just say a few things. We, we never want to under, underestimate um, the power that the people can have. Um, we can just admire and really highly regard the effort that Michael Smith has done. Yeah. We, we, think back, we think back last year when our Prime Minister um, mentioned on, uh, what was it, February the 24th, she announced at the, at the front there with the, with the kitchen cabinet um, <laughs> that there was going to be a carbon tax. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. we do. And do, do you remember the time she, she chose to, to announce that? It was right in the middle of the Christ, Christchurch earthquake. Remember that? Yeah. Right in the middle. All the headlines were about the earthquake in New Zealand. So she thought, well, I'll just come in under that cover, make the big announcement. It'll end up on page five somewhere. She misread the Australian public because when she announced it that day, um, the talkback radio that afternoon went into meltdown. The very next day, the front page of all of the newspapers throughout the country had her announcement of the carbon tax. And the, the New Zealand earthquake was still there on par with it. And since that day, the Australian public has been in anger, total anger. And she must have thought, well, people will get angry, so what? I'll, I'll get over it, you know? I'll just get in a pub, have a couple of beers, watch the football, everyone will just forget it. But no, March the 23rd, we went down there. We went down there on her turf. Right? And we did it again on August the 16th last year. In each occasion, we had over 35, 35 coaches. Now, I had no intentions to go back to Canberra, but I received a phone call from Barnaby Joyce probably about six weeks ago. He said, he's got to come back down. The place is a the place is a, is a mess. We're coming. Yeah. So many issues. So many issues was a mess. I said, oh Barnaby, I'm a bit, you know, I don't know. You know, the, the, pe the people have been incredible. Most of most of the folks that went to Canberra, like they're over fifties. You know, they 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 got grandkids and they just want to enjoy their life. They just want to have a normal life. I mean, how can I go to them and say, look, folks, we're going back down there. So, so anyway, so I thought, okay, we started off with three, three failures we we're going to highlight going down there, going to Canberra. I thought, yeah, Barnaby said to me, right, we've got carbon tax, water, mm -hmm. the land issue. I said, okay, three, that's enough. That three within two days grew to seven. <laughs> and I, and I, I got onto Alan Jones on the open line. I said, Alan, we're going down there to seven labour disasters. He said to me on air, what? Only seven? <laughs> I says, oh yeah, um, this is on air. I'm going, yeah, that's right. I forgot about the NBN, and you know, and, and then, and now it's grown to 23. Whoa! Right? And you know what's grown to the top of number one? Media freedom. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah, right? <laughs> that's, that's, gone, that's gone to number one because. Without the media, we would know nothing. We wouldn't know anything about the carbon tax. We wouldn't know anything about the NBN. We wouldn't, know, we wouldn't have known anything about the BER, the tin sheds with no air conditioning for a million dollars, the pink bats of four lives dead, 190 houses burnt down. Where would we be without the media? But having said that, the media at the same time 
This is a two-edged sword. On the one side, it'd be terrific, but on the other side, as Michael's pointing out tonight, the mainstream media have been sleeping at the wheel. They've been in fear. They've been intimidated by the most dictatorial prime minister ever in this country. Not even, not even, not even Gough Whitlam, Bob Hawke, Paul Keating of Labor prime ministers would ever have thought, dreamt, to pick up a phone and threaten the most powerful news organisation in the world to basically pull a major story. Never. It will probably never happen again. That's how deceitful and powerful this woman is. And you know what's going to happen this Wednesday? We're going to go back there on her turf. Michael will be there. And, and this is, see, not so long ago, Julie Gillard, she was asked about, what do you think of those odd bods, those dinosaurs, those rat bags that have been going to the rallies in Canberra? And she made the comment to, to a reporter, to an interviewer, they get under my skin. So we, we irritate her. We like, you know when you get a splinter in your finger? It's, it's there, it's irritating. So that's the effect we have, and that's why we're going there Wednesday, and the top of the list is media freedom, and we are honoured that Michael will be there to speak, and they know that because we've let them know. Right? So if you still want to go, there are still buses available for Wednesday. It's nice that we've come here like this and listen to this, but to get there on their own turf, it goes to the next level. Oh, yeah. How many buses have we got there? Oh. Still counting. <laughs> still, still, I've still been on the phone today. There's the books, I'm still ringing. In fact, my phone, my phone calls were that many. My phone company today disconnected me. Oh. <laughs> and no, I, I, I ran, yeah, yeah, I finally got through to them, I says, I said, hang on a minute, I just paid my phone bill on the weekend. They said, but you're a private customer of ours, we can't work out why there's so many phone calls. I'm a popular man. I said, well, I'm not running a business, this is to help people. And then straight away, within a couple of minutes, I'm back on air. But I was actually disconnected today because of trying to get people, let people know what's going to happen. And we need to get there. We need to go there. Oh, they, yes. are, they are on the ropes. They're just hanging in there. We have a Prime Minister now who doesn't know which way to turn. Her own party is leaking against her. So for us to just sit back and just watch it all, we're missing out on a historic event. Yes. So I encourage you. Thank you. If, if you want to go, you can actually see me after this meeting. I can take your details. Or you can go to our website, which is stopcarbonlies.com, and, um, and make a book in there. Thank you very much.